Good morning. Got up early. We want to come out and take a look at Pelham's Corner. And it's the site of Major John Pelham's uh, famous assault against the Union Line, Battle of Fredericksburg, uh, December 13th, 1862. And uh, on four and a half acres of land that's been preserved here, and we're on the very far right flank of the Confederate line. And uh, we're at the Pelham's Corner Shopping Center with the uh, Family Dollar and Sun Levin right behind it. I'm sure you'd be proud. Um, on the other side of this building is a neighborhood called uh, Pelham's Crossing. So, yeah, and this is where Pelham had gotten Jeb Stewart's permission for he and his team to pull this lone 12-pound Napoleon forward, uh, assault the Union line, uh, holding them back for about an hour. And to let you know, uh, Abner Doubleday's division behind those buildings right there. And then uh, maybe half mile, three quarters of a mile up this old Richmond Stage Road was Meade's division. And uh, they were placed uh, right where the uh, Fredericksburg Country Club is now. So, and to paint a picture, uh, the assault began about 10 a.m. It was a really foggy morning. And there were cedar hedges uh, set up all along. At, at the time I read, this was the old mine road. And also cedar hedges placed all along this old Richmond Stage Road. And... Okay, this is a view of the battlefield, 1893. So pretty much completely flat at the time. I guess those cedar hedges are gone. But, uh... Yeah, here we are. Pelham's Corner. I uh, like say, very southern end of, of Jackson's line here. And... Here you go, Doubleday's division, Meade's division, uh, and uh, Gibbon's division. And uh, here is the, the site of Slaughter Pen Farm. Uh, I did a video on that a couple uh, a couple weeks ago. So, say it was about 10 a.m., Pelham, Pelham began firing. And uh, initially, the Union line thought they were hitting being, being hit with friendly fire. Uh, it took a minute to figure out they were being hit by enemy shells. And they had a hard time spotting Pelham. Like I say, it was a foggy morning area it was lined with cedar hedges and uh, their team had actually uh, dug in some earthworks I had a little entrenchment and they would push the gun up to the top of the entrenchment when it would fire it would recoil pushing them down making them harder to see and uh, yeah once they did get a bead on him uh, he, he was hard to hit because uh, he, he would hitch up his gun move it to a, a different location and yeah to, to let you know eventually Abner Doubleday had uh, four brigades uh, i'll note the brigade to the far left was the famous iron brigade um anybody's familiar with the battle of gettysburg might, might remember them and uh, also uh, you had union artillery across the rappahannock rappahannock's maybe about a quarter of a mile uh, ahead um and they had a hard time firing they couldn't aim their guns low enough so yeah and at three different points uh jeb stewart had asked pelham to pull back he kept refusing and yeah, I kept refusing, and at one point, Jeb Stewart had a second rifle placed, a, ba a Blakely rifle, between here and Hamilton's Crossing. Hamilton's Crossing is maybe three-quarters of a mile in that direction, and I believe it had only gotten off one shot, and then it was eventually nailed with a direct hit. So, yeah, but it, eventually Pelham began to lo run low on ammunition, and like I say, Double, uh, Double Day's line began to advance, so he, uh, he pulled back and, and then uh, called off his assault. So, and the, uh, the reason it, it was important because it had held the uh, enemy uh, line back for about an hour, like it gave time for the fog to lift and gave time for Stonewall Jackson's line to better see what was going on. And it also had taken Doubleday's uh, division out of the fighting because for the rest of the battle, they were focused on, on this area. So, yeah, the gallant Pelham, he was a blonde haired blue eyed soldier um, out of Alabama. And this is his famous uh, baby face picture. This photo was taken when he was 19, 20 years old, uh, when he was at West Point. And yeah, his courage and bravery did catch up with him. He died three months later in a cavalry charge, uh, Battle of Kelly's Ford, which is about 25 miles up the Rappahannock, kind of getting close to Culpeper. And a, uh, a shell had exploded right next to him and a piece of shrapnel hit him in the back of the head. So... And yeah, he was involved in half a dozen battles, over 60 engagements. So he was kind of one of the uh, all-stars, I guess, of the uh, Confederacy. So, and over here, um, one of the, these uh, famous uh, markers that were placed here back in 1903 by a Confederate veteran 
I, I believe his name was James Power Smith, and he was a staff uh, staff officer under Stonewall Jackson. So, and you'll see, I believe there were about 13 uh, of these placed all, all along the battlefield. So, and uh, over here, this plaque, the Gallant Pelham, he, he had gotten that name from Robert E. Lee. Robert, had Lee. Robert E. Lee had written in his reports after the battle, he referred to him as the Gallant Pelham. So that became his nickname for the last uh, three months of his life. And Robert E. Lee was actually stationed about two miles in that direction on Telegraph Hill, which is now Lee's Hill. Um, which is his headquarters, uh, and he was observing the uh, the engagement, and he proclaimed, uh, "It is glorious to see such courage in one so young." So, yeah, and over here, this marker uh, dedicated to Fort Hood, and about a month before the battle, November of '62, a fort was erected along the Rappahannock, and it was to prevent Union Union uh, boats for, uh, from ascending the Rappahannock. Uh, there were Union uh, gunboats down in Port Royal. So, yeah, and to let you know, eventually when the uh, fighting began uh, during the Battle of Fredericksburg, it was actually taken by that uh, the Iron Brigade. All right, I guess that's it for uh, Pelham's Corner. And again, yeah, if you like these kinds of videos, you can subscribe. If you want to support the channel, hit the like button, and uh, see you.